What's going on warriors? We're back. We're ready to do this thing. I'm breaking it down. Gamescom. Well, not Gamescom because there wasn't really much to talk about at Gamescom if I'm absolutely honest. I mean, Microsoft did their things. Pretty good. Backward compatibility. Again, which is marvellous. I love it. DVR. Windows 10. I did like Microsoft because they did really talk about Gaming. They didn't try to force no garbage down our necks. They did show them Windows 10 stuff, but they didn't give it to us in bucket loads that we didn't want to hear. They did focus more on the games. But there was nothing really much to talk about, to be absolutely honest with you. The Halo 5, the Lara Croft, whatever. I'm indifferent to it, all of it. What I do want to talk about, which is new to me and exciting, is Scalebound. That's what motivated me and excited me. The only thing, to be honest with you, the Midbound Fantasy 15 thing was kind of cool. I waited for today because yesterday was the start day of Gamescom. And I thought, let me wait till tomorrow because more stuff will come out. Tomorrow has come and there's nothing. Nothing. I mean, I mean, there's EA press conference. Garbage. Final Fantasy ATR active time report was... A masterclass in answering questions, not answering questions, and wasting time. It's quite brilliant. They did show Marlboro Tentacle, which was kind of interesting. Lovely, actually. That was it. There was nothing else there. So there's really nothing that I should talk about other than Scalebound, which is the game that I'm most hyped for. I'm hyped. Did I say I'm hyped? I did. Okay, I won't say it again. They showed us. Two new characters, the main character, Drew, and the second character called Fuban, who's a dragon. Now these two have got like, they'll have like a mad conversation, relationship, where they're interacting with each other, and communicating with each other, and just like having like all kinds of witty banter, right? And the way that they will interact with each other is, I think at first, they're not going to be getting on too well. They might have just entered a pact of each other. Because if you look at Drew's arm, his arm is like the same scale as Fuban, the dragon. He's got the same kind of scale, the same kind of colour, the same everything. And when he's looking at his hand and stuff like that, yeah. And that also makes me think because you can customise the way Fuban looks. As you're going along the game, you customise him. Customize his abilities, and when you customize his abilities, you can actually make him look different. Like maybe he's a speed type, so you make him his speed, right? But then that changes his appearance. But if you want to make him more of an armor type and more of attack and defense, then he becomes more of a big type. Because you saw, like, he uses his tail as an attack. Right, so maybe he can uh, uh, make his tail more powerful, right? And the armor on his face, like when he does his fire, like when he does like the um, the behemoth, um, sorry, behemoth. What am I talking about? Bahamut, um, breath. You know, like you can power those kind of things up. Now the reason I say that is because when you look at the trailer at the very end of the trailer that they showed at Gamescom, you saw three different dragons, and all three dragons were basically Fuban. You had one version that was kind of like slim and another version which was big, who looked like, like a power type um, Fuban dragon. And then you had our one who looked like a balanced type, who was like, you know, the middle between that has every all the stats are like balanced. So that's why I think you can customise your dragon, Fuban, and make him look different, but it's still going to be the same Fuban. And it's got multiplayer co-op. Like, it must be like every single stage has got like a final dungeon. Because you saw in the trailer, there was like a final, yeah, dungeon, cave. That had like, um, like um, a snake with multiple heads. Hydra. They had like a Hydra in there, right? And then your teammates online could come on and just help you fight. And we know about this through um, Dragon's Dogma. They've done this before, so we know... Uh, they can do this and it's really good where you can have a single player game but you do have a section where there's a boss to beat where you have to join with multiple people now this is going to be an action RPG it's actually going to be an RPG but I don't think it's open world it might be open world I don't know but I think it's going to be a massive game with godlike story 
massive areas that you could just because you're gonna have a dragon that can fly the areas have got to be bloody enormous right and there's going to be a lot of banter because this is Platinum Games and they're really good with their character interactions when you look at Dante when you look at Leon Kennedy Resident Evil 2 when you look at Beautiful Joe and Sylvia when you look at Bayonetta um, and you know Ceresa and all those kind of characters you can see that they do dialogue very well but I think at first you're not going to get on with Fuban. Fuban, you're not going to get on. Because Drew, at the beginning of the trailer, tapped Fuban and said, you're right. Like, go to work, kill him. And Fuban just knocked him off. He knocked him off. He said, what are you talking about? You do it. I ain't doing your heavy lifting for you. There, there. You kill him. Yeah. And then he was like, you could have just told me to get off. Use your damn words. Yeah. And you can see that they're going to have like, um, the, the relationship is going to grow as we get to know because I think one of the main important things in any type of game like this is for us to care. We have to care about the characters that we're playing with. We have to care about their story. That's one of the main important things that I think is important in video gaming today. Other than mechanics and story and actually learning and feeling like you're gaining some type of knowledge and information and growth as you're playing the game, your, the, your accumulation of playtime means something. It's not just the story is the end all and be all, because then it's just pointless, you might as well just go read a book, right? You want to gain that, oh, I've got better, I've actually got better at the game, like things look, so like something at first, when you first start playing the game, you couldn't react to it, but by the middle of the game, that same thing that you couldn't react to in the beginning, it's almost like it's in slow motion because you're, you're so in tune with the game now, you're feeling it. And that's what I think is also the music does. Because I, what I noticed, yeah, was the game has wicked music, right? And I think that, I think it's Prodigy. I actually think Prodigy is doing the music for this game, right? Because when you listen to the music, the music they listen to, it sounds like some kind of 8-bit music, right? But I definitely heard Prodigy. I definitely heard them, but I don't know, maybe it's not, whatever. But I noticed the music changes. Like the first sequence that you see in Scalebound, I saw two different videos, right? And in those two different videos, that same beginning sequence had two different music. One had kind of like upbeat, kind of like crazy DMB music. And then the second one had like house music with like an 8 bit kind of like doo -doo 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 -doo, like Zelda kind of music and Mario, whatever. Yeah, so I'm excited, you know what Kami is like, he's really into his like retro games and kind of stuff like that. So I think that's really interesting the way that when the headphones come on and then this the music is dynamic, it's random, it randomizes, it's not the same music all the time. So it makes you feel it, you enjoy it. And what also I noticed was there's not going to be an emphasis on stylish action and combos. It's going to be an action game where the system is going to be crisp and crunchy and airtight, watertight. Yeah, but it's not going to be combos and stylish and, you know, amazing and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be more just as an RPG with a crunchy system, a mid system, which is very, very important. And I think that you obviously will be able to customise the way Drew is. Because another thing that I noticed was, if you notice, one Drew didn't have a shield, he had a big sword. And another shield... Um, guy, another Jew, had just a sword. And then there's one that we had. We had a bow, an arrow, a sword and a shield. Right? So, and, and the jackets were different. There was one Jew that had a different type of jacket. So you'd be able to like change his appearance slightly. I don't think you'd be able to change him too much. But I think you'd be able to change his jacket and maybe the headphones or whatever. Because oh, another thing I noticed was in some battles the headphones were on and you heard the music. But there were some battles where there was no music. Yeah, so I think maybe you can put it on yourself, like you press like the, 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 the bumper, the right bumper, left bumper, left trigger, right trigger, whatever, to put the music on at the beginning of the battle, the, the battle starts and you've got your music, because some battles there was music, some battles there weren't, but you, you visually saw him put them on and then take them off at the end of the battle. So I don't know how that's going to work. And you've got to remember, this is a pre-alpha version, so it's really, really, really early in development that normally we shouldn't even be able to see this type of a version. I'm excited. What excited me if it was the potential because it's a pre-alpha version. It looks so beautiful. You can see that the relationship between Ju and Fuban is going to be, you're gonna love it. 
you're going to be so endeared to these characters. And at first, they're going to like each other. Like, you can see, you can tell Fuban what to do. Like, there's certain um, enemies. You can say, attack the enemy. But maybe Fuban isn't going to want to obey your orders sometimes. Because you can see, he's not just a dragon that just does as you'd say. to go over there. He goes over there. Like, you can tell that Fuban ain't going to have a bar of it. He's his own character. And he'll do whatever he wants sometimes. It's like um, in King of Fighters. Right, like in King of Fighters, if you have like, you pick the right colours, you have like three man teams in King of Fighters, right? If you've picked three colours, let's just say, Ayuri, Yashiro, Chris. Now, if Yashiro is on good terms with Chris, then you see, you press the start button, you've got like a smiley face. You have a smiley face, a normal face, and an angry face. If there's a smiley face, then they like each other. If it's a normal face, then they will randomise, they might help you, they might not. And there's uh, the, the mean face, which means they will never help you. So say you're in a throw, or you're dizzy, yeah, and then you shake the buttons. Yashiro will jump in and help Chris, right? And Chris will jump in to help Yashiro. But if Ayuri and Yashiro have got the angry face with each other, they don't like each other. This is the King of Fighters I'm talking about. When you shake the button, Ayuri won't help Yashiro. If Chris is already dead, yeah, Yashiro won't help um, Ayuri, and Ayuri won't help Yashiro because they don't like each other. I think that's going to be the same thing in this game, where... Fuban's not really going to be there to respond to his orders all the time. But as you get go through the game, you build the relationship up, then they're going to start being more in tune with each other. You've seen something like this in Final Fantasy 15 as well, like the Sync Link, or Link Sync, or whatever it's called. Like sometimes before battle, maybe Gladio will come up to you and come up to you with a plan and say, I'll attack them first. Make sure you're always in this certain location. So when I hit them, you just come in, right? And then Noxus pushes you and says, why do, I have to t why do you have to take point? Why can't I lead? And he says, because I'm the more experienced. I'm the one that could do this. Yeah. And then they go into battle. And lots of occasions, you'll get the link. Link system. Where they come in and you start attacking. Right. But if you haven't got that initial thing where they say they come up with a strategy like Ignis Promptu or Gladio comes up to you then you're not going to get the sync that the sync ratio is not going to be high percentage you're never going to get it whereas if you do get the sync ratio at the beginning of the game you're going to get the sync ratio like all the time it's going to be a beautiful battle that's what I think this game is going to be so it's going to make you more endeared to the characters it's going to make you enjoy who Ju is and who Fuban is and their adventure I'm excited this is why I'm excited about it. And you know that it's Platinum Games. The system is going to be airtight, man. You already saw he had a stinger. He has the shield. You saw he had like a block so he can parry or defend or whatever. You know, he has like the, the dragon transformation. Where he can like transform into like a dragon form. It's like an extended part of Fuban. Right? Because you can see it had the same scales and stuff like that. So that's why I'm excited about um, Scale Bound. I'm hype about it. I cannot wait to play this game more. It's coming out holidays next year, um, the holiday um, 2016, which I'm glad. I don't want them to rush the game or nothing like that. Platinum Games, you really did a beautiful job with this game, man. And I know he did a cameo. This is he's passionate about this game. You know what I mean? Phil Spencer, and you know, Phil Spencer, that man's a gamer, right? That's the reason that he went to Platinum Games. He knows. He knows, Square Enix, they know, that's why they're doing the new Nier game with um, Square and um, Platinum Games. Activision, even those jabronis at Activision know about Platinum Games. That's why Platinum Games has done the Transformers game and they've done the, um, what the other game is. Um, something, the Avatar. They've done, yeah, the Avatar with um, Platinum Games. So, a lot of people in the industry know about Platinum Games. I'm high. I want to know what you guys think about Scalebound. Let's get into this thing. Let's start this conversation. Scalebound is still over a year away. Let's not talk about it now. Okay, Warriors. Until my next video. Thanks for tuning in. Love you guys. Until my next video. Stay blessed and be fabulous.